Hey everybody. Well, we're back again and uh, wanted to talk to you about the mounting of um, this Vanguard scope on the Henry using these tally rings. Uh, the tally rings came in. The package is pretty simple. There's really nothing in it except the rings and the required screws that you need to mount them up. In fact, it's so simple that they don't even include um, any instructions. Really what I did, I'm just going to walk you through the steps. Uh, I removed the rear sight here because I was concerned about the clearance. To remove that rear sight, they recommend you use a brass punch or other non-marring punch. Brass punches are a little bit on the expensive side and they don't typically just sell one. I don't need them very often so I just found a uh, piece of plastic that I had around, suitable size piece of plastic lined it up on that well there's one screw you remove and then you slide the rear sight out of the dovetail to slide it out you move towards the ejection side of the receiver uh, if you wanted to put it back in you would go the other way line up your non-marring punch um, on that rear sight give it a tap with a hammer and then it slides right out there are four screws on top of the receiver that you then remove um, pretty small you could use a gunsmith screwdriver set I used a regular screwdriver but was very careful when I did it. And then all you do is set your tally uh, bases, the lower half of the one piece rings over those receiver screws, everything lined up just right. You have the choice of mounting these whichever direction they face. They can go any direction you want on this gun because this gun, the top of the receiver is flat. Uh, if you have a gun that has a barrel that begins to be integrated into that receiver, one of your tally rings will have a more pronounced curve, and the curved one obviously goes with the curved part of the gun. To mount these uh, on the receiver, a lot of people recommend that you degrease the gun first, and then you mount the lower bases to put Loctite in. All the research I did seemed to indicate that the reason you do the degreasing is to put so that the Loctite will stick. Um, I did not use Loctite. I just um, screwed them down to torque specifications. And then what you do is you set your scope on, make sure you get your eye relief where you like it, and then you screw the tops of the bases, um, uh, the rings onto the bases, and you're all set. You're gonna wanna level your crosshairs. I got mine pretty close. I didn't use a precision leveling system but it's close enough for the work that I'm going to be doing with this gun. And if I checked it, I'm pretty sure that it would be right on. One thing I would mention that I did buy and I used, this is a product by Wheeler. It's called the Fat Wrench. And this Fat Wrench um, is actually like a torque driver, but it operates like a screwdriver. You can just dial up the torque. Uh, they say they're plus or minus a couple inch pounds. Really a handy tool to have around, and it set me back about... 50 bucks. This way I know that my um, all my screws are torqued to factory specifications and the the wheeler the fat wrench does come with a small assortment you get about 10 pieces of um, screwdriver set but also you have these little torques in there and that's what these uh, these little screws are were Torx model. So you get it mounted up once you have that done I did go ahead and use one of these kind of hinky laser bore siders just to see, get me close, hopefully. Uh, and I just did that at about 30 yards, maybe 20 yards, just to get them reasonably close to lined up, the crosshairs and the point of impact. Um, one thing I would mention, I don't know if all these are the same, but this little uh, laser kit comes with these tiny little um, attachments and you attach this to the bore cider and this you pick the one that is closest to the barrel size of your gun and then you screw it on and you slide it in to get a pretty firm fit now I didn't buy a super high-end bore cider because I'm not using it that often and I would mention that these little these plastic um, jobbers that, that are supposed to fit to your barrel size they do a fine job but when you first open it, you might notice that there are some bits of plastic on there. I made sure to knock them all off so that um, in the process of inserting this into the barrel and removing it, I wouldn't lose a piece of, piece of plastic down the barrel and, um, and cause a problem. 
So after that, took it down to the range. You'll see a, a quick shot we took at the range at the end of this video. And uh, after two boxes of ammo, these tally rings are holding zero just right. Really pleased with them. I would mention that these rings here, they uh, for this particular gun, are the low rings. I probably could have gotten by with extra low. I figured with the low rings I would have three mils of clearance between the bell and the barrel, which is about an eighth of an inch. Uh, looks there like I have closer to a quarter of an inch. And part of that is because the, you see there's a perceptible drop between the top of the receiver and where that barrel starts. There's a, a little bit of a drop down there. So when you're trying to figure out the lowest possible rings you can put on, you'll want to try to account for that that drop, at least with this particular model gun. Um, so I probably could have gotten by with extra lows, and that's for a 44 millimeter objective lens. Out at the range, the couple boxes of ammo, the rings uh, held, the, the rifle stays um, at zeroed, uh, crosshairs didn't move, everything's here snug, nothing is moving. The only thing that I've noticed right now is that right here by this side gate uh, loading port, I don't know if this is a product of where the uh, like the back end of the cartridge might be catching that or if there's some little bit of blowback somehow that's coming through that receiver but I've noticed a little bit of marring right here by the gate I don't know if you can see it that close so I'm gonna talk to Henry about that but otherwise uh, this is a shooter straight shooting gun the action is super smooth it's fun to shoot the recoil is um, uh, probably about like my 243, maybe a little less, and I think it could be due to this improved recoil pad that um, my Remington does not have, so that probably helps. Um, overall, I'm really pleased. I've just got a couple little issues here with the, the finish. I, I'm really uh, a little bit concerned that I'm seeing what appears to be the beginnings of some scratches here on the, um, the side gate loading port when I've only put a couple boxes through. But the tally rings are doing a great job. The gun's a, a shoot straight, real fun to shoot, fun to handle, and the scope is exceptional. Uh, I was shooting at about seven power. Um, I dialed it all the way up to max to check my holes, and uh, after a slight parallax adjustment to get everything crisp, uh, lets in a lot of light, super bright. I get edge-to-edge -edge clarity. Uh, I'm really pleased with uh, how the scope's doing and it's a pleasure to look through on low power as well but I was shooting seven eight nine something like that um, at a hundred yards mainly typically because that's about where I'll have it dialed in the field at, at seven and then dial it up to max power or 14 ish um, when I wanted to check where we were on the paper uh, but it was successful a couple days at the range had fun enjoyed the new gun we have it zeroed we're one inch high at a hundred and I think that's going to do what I needed to so let's take a, a quick um, a quick moment take a look at what she looks like in action show you a little range video and we'll be right back That'll do it. We're one inch high at 100, so we'll take it. Okay, so that was it. You've seen the whole deal from the unboxing of the uh, new components, mounting up the scope with the tally rings. Um, overall, I'm super duper happy. You've seen a little bit of what it looks like out at the range when it is in action. Overall, I'd certainly recommend the gun, the rings, and the rifle. I've got no problems with any of them so far. Uh, we'll check back in after we put some more uh, put some more down range and make sure everything is still staying um, all trued up. But right now, I, I think we've got um, we've got a really nice package here. So no complaints. I would wholly, fully recommend tally rings. Henry, uh, the new H09-3030 with the side gate loading model, although I'm a little concerned about that, that marring right there by the loading gate, and um, the Vanguard Endeavor RS4 um, scope is certainly up to the task. Clear, bright, lots of light. So far we're doing great. I hope this has helped you uh, in some way. If you enjoyed it, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned. We'll get you some more of these.